morning. Good morning. Let's get our hymns and turn to page 204. We'll stand and sing all three stands. morning that you can say when the roll yes. is caught up yonder you'll be there amen yes. uh, sadly a lot of people sing that as like they're automatically going to be there but uh, I hope that you know that you know that you yes. know amen. that when the roll is caught up yonder yes. you'll be there good to be here good to be in the house of the yes. Lord this morning good to see everybody um, I'm, I'm a little heavy hearted this morning and we'll get that in a little bit um, uh, just a lot to pray about, but uh, remember the Bryan Center uh, next Sunday uh, from two to three o'clock. Go out there, make your plans to go out there and sing and minister to the uh, folks at the nursing home, and you'll be glad you did. You'll get a blessing, and it'll be a, a great blessing to them as well. But I promise you that you'll get the bigger blessing if you go out there, and just uh, just a response that you get from uh, those folks out there, and, and the need. Uh, that that you see in the urgency, so uh, go out there and be a part of that, and um, and witness and minister to them, and uh, you'll be glad you did. So remember that at two o'clock at the Bryan Center, uh, right down here off of uh, 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 three twenty one, and uh, or that's one fifty, ain't it? Yeah, one fifty. Uh, but uh, right there on the corner, most of you know where that's at. Uh, also, um, remember, are we doing? Anything for the today a meeting or are we gonna wait? If we could just set some dates, that would just work. Yeah. We well, yeah, we're needing to set a date for our homecoming. So um if if you've got you know, if it's a Sunday in October, we're gonna we're trying we're looking at it what, the third Sunday? 
the second or third Sunday in October. Uh, so um, that's what we're shooting for. So if there's any reason that you know that conflicts the schedule or, or you got an idea uh, a better date, uh, then bring it up and we'll we'll get that set so we can get ready. Um, it seems like it's always about the second or third uh, Sunday in October. So um, I know I won't be here the second Sunday in October. So um, is that the fifth? The first, okay, the first. All right, so never mind. Scratch that, scratch that. So second or third Sunday in October. So sound like the second might be a good one, but we'll let you know on that. Uh, we'll try to get that that sealed in by next week, and uh, we can start making arrangements. Invite somebody to come. Uh, homecoming's a great opportunity. Invite somebody to come to church and um, get them to come and see what we're all about. Amen. It ain't about us. It's about Jesus, and uh, you know, people's out there looking for that. Uh, they're, you know, just like with politics, people's fed up with they, they, they fed up with a lot of the church stuff too because they're not getting what they're looking for. And we want to know when they come here, it's about Jesus, Amen. And that we welcome everybody to come to this church and and uh, see what God is doing here. So invite them to come out. Homecoming's a great time to do that. Um, and also uh, make your plans for that. Um, also, birthdays and anniversaries. Don't want to forget them. Uh, for August, uh, Caitlin Fulbright and Polly T. Paul Weaver, uh, a.k.a. Booty Weaver, uh, and uh, Bradley Knight, Darling Turner, uh, Gail Alexander, Susan Goins, and Larry Burleson all have birthdays uh, for August, and also anniversaries, Tammy uh, and Dwayne Williams, and Larry and Bobby Burleson, and Angelica and Dalton Towery. So uh, remember them, and happy birthday and happy anniversary to you. And after, um, well, go ahead, Angie, just... Man, may God bless you and uh, give you many, many more. And we have prayer now. Uh, we do got a lot to pray about. Um, let's do remember I, I got a uh, call this morning from my cousin Cynthia um, that her niece, but a cricket show uh, was found shot three times this morning. And they airlifted her to Charlotte Memorial Hospital. So be in much prayer for that family. I've known this family for for almost 30 years and they've been dear to my heart and good people and and it's just it's tragic uh a day uh, tonight is our first uh sunday night prayer meeting don't forget that and a day that amidst all the tragedy that we've seen in the news last night i was going to request tonight the focus of our prayer be for our young people and then you get news like that. So um, just be praying for that family. I don't know the extent of everything yet, but I know Cynthia was really upset and said that she was shot three times and uh, her dad found her this morning and she's been airlifted to Charlotte Memorial Hospital. So just pray for her and, and for that entire family uh, when we go to the Lord's Prayer. But I do want to remind you, to let, let's, let's make uh, the focus of our prayer this morning, our, our, I mean tonight, uh, our young people. Um, it's tragic what we're facing. The the shooting in Texas, the 22-year-old young man, just uh, more recently that, these two young boys going on this, this killing spree. Um, the, then as we slept last night and woke up, found out there was another shooting in Dayton, Ohio, with nine people uh, dead there and a uh, 20 in the, the Texas shooting. Uh, church, we got to pray. Yeah. And... and, and it's it's sad they're trying to make political issues out of this, and I can understand some of their talking points, but this ain't a problem about guns. It ain't a problem. About, it's a problem about the heart Amen. and about the evil and about a generation that's being left godless and being left to do whatever they want to do and not being taught and not not being uh, taught the Bible, and uh, that that's what it's all about. And so uh, let's, let's remember that and remember all these families uh, during this uh, and, um, and lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Um, also remember 
uh, continue member Uncle Larry, pray for him as he's going to be having back surgery this uh, next week, I believe it is. And my mom, she'll be going for uh, uh, pre-op uh, surgery uh, the, the 12th. So pray for her as they get ready to do her surgery and uh, continue to pray for Brother Boas. Uh, glad he's doing better and uh, just continue to pray for him and um, anybody else this morning before we go to Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. Tammy. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. And let's continue to remember Crystal's sister, Jenny. And good to see Sister Gail back with, <coughs> with us. Continue praying for her, Sister Gail. Uh, I see Gavin yesterday. He's going to be leaving for five years. <coughs> Sister Gail, I don't know if you know this, but he was showing pictures of, uh, you know, like helicopters going down in the ocean and he'll hold them and have to figure out how to get it out of the situation. <coughs> Bless your Lord. Bless your Jesus. Anybody else this morning? Let's remember to pray for all of our young people. That's Becca. This is this will be her last Sunday with us for a while. Um, she'll we'll be taking her off to Tennessee and uh, week after next, and um, that's going to be her home for the next four. And, she says maybe eight years. <laughs> so pray for our young people. And not only those that's going to college, uh, pray for those that's starting school uh, and, and those that's graduating, Zachary, and uh, um, those that's going into their professional uh, lives and, and where the Lord leads them after high school. and. Church, we need to pray for our young people. Uh, they are be- these young people. I can't help it. My heart just breaks for them, and you can't. It's hard to reach them because they've just. They, they're a generation that's just been left unattended, and it ain't like when we was coming up. Lord, me and Trey was handfuls when we was growing up and teenagers. But thank God we had parents that wasn't scared to jerk a knot in our hind end. Amen. And tell us right from wrong and correct us and, and show us love in more ways than one. And, and, and this, this generation today is just, they're lost. And I don't mean that in a bad, descending way. But that's just the truth. And, and they're without any direction. And, and they've, been, they've been brought up being taught by video games and, and social medias and... And without any kind of guidance, and um, we need to pray for them. So let's remember all of these. And uh, Robert's grandson graduated. We want to congratulate him. And uh, I'll, I'll, we're just so proud of. And I know as I talk to him through all that, uh, just the, the background and and the influences that was in his life. And I tell you, that means so much. Uh, for these young people, and that's what they're looking for. They're crying out, saying, "Look, I need something," and um, and they're not finding it in, in where they're looking. So I, I know that today we can all say without uh, uh, hesitation that we know people that we want to pray for. Yeah. So Terry and I won't take up no more time, but I went down there afterwards, telling her about uh, cricket and uh, Lily and Dalton uh, was. Their Sunday school lesson was about the lost sheep and the lost coin. And, and Terry, in the lesson, she gave them coins. And people in our families that we know said, even if a if hundred of them's right with the Lord and there's one that's not, uh, would it be worth it to go and tell them about the Lord and to write their names down on those coins? And I thought, man, what a great idea. 
And so I ask this morning that we remember all those uh, that need prayer and that need the Lord this morning. Amen. Any unspoken by raised hand, I'm certain we all got them. Brother Dwayne, would you lead us in prayer, please? Lord, you're so good to us, and I thank yes, you. Yes, Lord, Lord, you are Jesus. God, I hear the words of these folks. That are Lord, yes, Lord. God. I don't know uh, none of these folks, God, but <laughs> God, it, 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 it burdens my heart. I know you say this with the burden. Lord, it does, God. We're so heavy this morning. God save her life. And just like, uh, Brother Lord, Dave, I don't know where she's at. God, God, but Lord, I pray that you touch her and give her that, give her that opportunity, God, to receive you as her God, Lord, I pray that you be with these families, God. Lord, Lord, Lord we can talk and we can at least yes, say Lord. Lord and, and that, that's not comforting, but God, I know you can. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord, God. I mean, yes, God, Jesus. God, Lord, we pray for these young God, people today, God. Lord, man, there's everybody's God. Lord, do, Father. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Lord, you know our all hearts this morning. Yes, Lord. God, I thank you for this church. I yes, thank you God. Folks. Yes, so Lord. God, it's just a, a, a reflection of you. Thank you, God. Yes. For this yes, Lord. Lord I thank you for those who have listened Yes, Lord. So much to learn. God, I pray yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, 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 Lord Jesus. Lord. Yes. Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. God, a preacher talking about these young folks. Yes, Lord. We should be burdened for them, God. Yes, yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, God. Lord, you said those days would come, God, and Lord, we've just ignored it and turned it away, Father. Yes. Help us, God, to help us. Yes, yes. The rest of Lord, just be with them, surround them. Let them be that torch bearer, God, for Jesus, the light. Lord, don't let them see them and let them see Christ in their life, God, that they would point others to you and protect them. God, I pray for you, Lord. I thank you, God, for all that Yes. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, I pray for the rest of the service to sing, Lord. I pray, God, that you'd use it to lift up Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. That's what we're here, God. Yes, to Jesus. Him, yes, Lord. God, I pray you touch Brother Larry today. Lord, oh, grant it, I pray, God. God. Yes, Jesus. God, yes, God. Lord, we need it this morning. We can't do it and function without you this morning. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Your will will be done in everything. Yes, yes, Lord. Do, Father. Lord, I can't do it alone, God. Don't let them see me, look at me. Don't let them look to Jesus and see Him and hear from Him this morning. Amen. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you, God, for all praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Before the foundations of the world, you have loved us so much that you already have. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yeah. In Jesus' name I pray. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yeah.
good. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Lord, that we're able to come out to hear the word of praise. Yes, praise, praise God. God. Amen. We all make it here. Yes, yes. thank you, Lord. We thank you for all the prayers you've answered. Yes, yes. Lord, thank you, Lord. And Lord, we pray for all these requests. God help us. Yes. We pray about me that we reach down and we pray in the prayer. God bless yes. Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for this offering. Thank you. We pray about yes. this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Turn to page 122. We'll stand the first, second, and last stage. We ain't got the practice yet, y'all. I got to look at it. <laughs>
Amen. I'm glad that it's finished, aren't you? And you know when something's finished, there's nothing that can be added to it. Can't take nothing away from it. You can't add nothing to it. When it's finished, it is finished. And Jesus cried, it is finished. The battle is over. If people just get a hold of that this morning. The battle is over, church. I mean, Jesus won at the cross. Amen. When He died for our sins and He rose from the grave and ascended up to heaven to sit on the right hand of the Father and He's there making intercession for all that I call upon Him. You want to know what to straighten this old country out? Let them begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked way and repent of their sins, I will heal their land. Amen. I'm glad that it's been won this morning. If you got your Bibles real quickly uh, this morning, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to read verses 13 and 14. Very familiar. I hadn't preached on this in quite a while. Uh, I preached around it. I preached messages similar to it. Uh, I, I just about every message, uh, I'll, I'll make some reference uh, uh, kind of to this uh, with what's going on in the world today and the teaching and the doctrines and uh, people's ideology and uh, what they feel, uh, you know, merits them uh, to get to heaven. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think if you'd, if you'd uh, poll people today, are you going to heaven? Yeah, I'm going to heaven. Well, uh, how do you know you're going to heaven? I mean, that thing would just range from so many different answers and uh, you would find that a lot of people think they're getting there uh, because, you know, uh, they're good people and uh, because they work hard, because they're a church member or whatsoever or, ever, uh, or any of these things. But uh, many people have an idea that uh, they're going to heaven. And uh, when we sing that song, when the roll is caught up yonder, I'll be there. Uh, churches all over the world would sing that song and everybody would join in and, and, and I believe in maybe they, they feel that there's truth to it that when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there but the, the irony is when the roll is called not everybody's going to be there amen uh, now that's not something that we like to hear and it's something that I'm afraid that preachers has gotten away from preaching and, uh, and, and, and I don't mean like it's up to me who's going to be there or not uh, I hope all of you is going to be there. Uh, but when I sing the song, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. I know I'm going to be there, amen, because I've made preparations. I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and uh, my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and, and I know my name's going to be there. Something uh, uh, I always find interesting about roll call uh, when you're somewhere, uh, you know, your name is listed on the roll, amen. Uh, I've sat in different situations or different. Uh, events and they would have a roll call. Uh, I, one of my most memorable is uh, in the courtroom, and I was up there for a traffic violation. And uh, they they always have roll call. The DA uh, come out there, and he's got a stack of people that's uh, scheduled to appear that day. And um, he calls your name, and he'll ask you. We said, when I call your name, <clears throat> tell me how you plead: guilty, not guilty, or if you have an attorney to represent you. And, uh, and he'll say it over and over. And that's back when Black was the attorney uh, some years ago. And um, he said, do not say here. He said, when I call your name, uh, tell me how you plead. And if there's anyone representing you, do not say here. Three times he said that. And so he started off uh, with a row. And the very first person he called, the guy shouted out here. I mean, there was a stack of files like that. And they have, they have them in order. Uh, to their case, so he took his file and he stuck it on the very bottom. And that guy's in court all day. Nobody else said here after that. Uh, but but roll call. I, I remember another place where uh, I was at an event and they they called my name and and I was on the roll and and they told me you know what to do. And another guy kept saying, well, uh, he said anybody's name that wasn't called. And the guy had told them. And uh, he said, but I'm supposed to be here. And the guy, what he done? He didn't say, well, okay, go ahead. He said, well, let me check. He went right back down and looked through the roll and the book and the registration. And the guy's name wasn't on there. And the guy said, well, I know I'm supposed to be here. He said, sir, your name is not on the roll. And, and I cannot let you come to the event. And so he, he had to leave. Now, I, I don't know if that was a misunderstanding or, or something that's apparently something that happened. But the guy said, I know that I'm supposed to be here. 
And I think about that. Oh. And the guy didn't say, well, I apologize. It was my mistake. You know, go on in. He said, let me check. He looked again and looked again. And he said, sir, your name is not on the register. And he, could, he wouldn't let him in. And, and I think about people getting to heaven on that day. Oh, you know, I'm supposed to be here. I know, I know, my na- I know I'm supposed to be here. My mama told me all my life I was going to be here. And, and, and they'll check the road. And the Bible says, and he opened a book. That's right. and, and, and in that book is the book of life. And those names that were written in the book of life are all the names of those that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And, and there's going to be people say, well, I, I know I'm supposed to be here. Uh, I was in church my entire life. Uh, I was a good person. And uh, I remember uh, the day I got baptized. I remember uh, my, my, my parents telling me that I was saved when I was a kid. I'm supposed to be here. Well, hold on, sir. And they go through the book. Yeah. Go through the book. Go through the book. Go through the book. Go. Well, your name's not written in the book. And they'll argue with the Lord. And, and the Bible says that on that day, Jesus said, and they'll argue with Him and they'll say, uh, you know, that, that, well, uh, listen, don't you remember I, 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 played, the, I played the organ or, or I was a preacher? And, or don't you remember how I taught Sunday school for 65 years at my local church and, and I know that I'm supposed to be here. And they look through the book and they're, they're not there. Well, wait, don't you remember all those good works that I've done? And don't you remember the good deeds and, and all the people that I visited? I made, I went to the nursing home with them. I went to the hospitals and I've done all these things. And, well, no, your name's not here. And then, uh, what about, uh, I mean, I even done uh, 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 great works and, and, and miracles and I prayed for people and, and man, look at my tithing record. Man, it exceeded anybody in that church. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Your name is not here. And they'll cry and they'll plead and they'll say, check it again, check it again. I know I'm supposed to be here. And Jesus will say, depart from me. That's right. You worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Think about that. What, what a vivid picture that is. So many people. And in and, and, and Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13, I, I think about, let me just read that real quick. I don't even think I'm going to get to preach because I just feel the Lord will work in this morning. Seven, uh, chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Maybe I will. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Now listen to me. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And what church? Many there be which go in there thereat. Many. We, we, we like to cut that out in church today. I wish I could stand up here and tell you that church, everything is going to be fine I wish I could sit up here and tell you that, look, you don't have to worry about, you know, where you're going. All you have to do is just do good and God loves you and and that 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 we're all just going to live happily ever after. I I wish I didn't have to tell you that that, that, uh, that what the Bible says, not that I don't want to tell you, but but, but that's what people want. But but Jesus said, enter ye in at the straight gate. Huh? Now, why did he start off like he said, enter ye in at the straight gate? There, there's something that Jesus said, look, I want you to listen. I want you to pay attention. I want you to focus. Amen. Focus, zip it. Yeah. <laughs> Back at, I mean, Lily, don't give me a hootie hoo. <laughs> but enter ye in. He's wanting to get your attention. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Jesus said, look, there's a right gate and a wrong gate. Enter in at the straight gate. And so many times we miss that. Jesus is clear. Jesus is passionate. Jesus is, 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 is caring. He's, trying, he's getting our attention here. I mean, don't start out and say, listen, I want to tell you something. 
That there's choices and decisions in life that you make. And we all make these choices and decisions every day. I mean, uh, you know, when, when, when we go shopping, we make a choice. We, we go buy a car, we want a red car or a black car. Or, or we, go, we go shopping, do I want this shirt or that shirt? People come in the store, well, there, there's choices. They look up on the board and, and they choose what they want to eat. There's many choices that they can make every day. We make choices every day. And, and Jesus, he, he, he makes the statement here, what he's trying to say, look, there's, there's no other choice. Amen. I mean, there is, but Jesus starts out with the, with the assertion and, and the, the certainty, and he's saying, look, uh, he said, enter the straight gate. So, uh, many of you my age or a little bit older remember the song that, was very popular by Led Zeppelin in the late 70s and uh, called Stairway to Heaven. And very popular song and uh, it talks about uh, there, one of the lyrics in the song says there are many paths that you can go by but in the long run you'll have time to change the one you're on. And, and so many people think that. They think, they think that, well, I've got plenty of time in church. I'm telling you, uh, without being a, a hypocrite, that I was one of them people that thought, well, I could just live and, and sow my wild oats and do what. And, and uh, I'll have time to change. But, but thank God He was merciful and graceful. And He was gracious. And, 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 and He had, had mercy on me. And He extended that time. There's many times that God could have called me out of this world. Right. Thank you. Thinking I had plenty of time and I look back and it scares me to death. And when I hear what's going on in the world today with these young people and, and with the news that I got this morning, it absolutely just burdens my heart that we're living in a time we're just telling our kids and the culture just, just do what you want and be happy. And, and, and the mindset is that there's, there's choices and, and, and there's plenty of time to change them. There's 29 people that will never be able to change the choices right. that they made. And I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm not saying that in being negative or being cruel or being no. But, but, but they'll, they'll never be able to change the choices that they made in life. Every day somebody leaves this world and, and their choices is made and, and it's over and they'll never be able to change them. And Jesus is saying uh, just right off the bat, hey, enter the straight gate. That's, don't make no other choices. Don't look no other direction. Don't, don't make no other decisions. Take the straight gate, the straight way. Don't be, don't be drawn away with the choice. And church, truly, there is a choice. In uh, the book of Joshua, God, Joshua says, uh, if, if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, uh, he said, uh, then serve the gods of your fathers uh, that, that you served before the cross. And he said, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. And, and Jesus, I'm glad that when He starts off this, this sermon here that He didn't say they are two gates. Now, He's going to go on and say that. But, but the importance of the sermon and, and the Word that He's teaching is so important and, and His concern is so great and, and, and the, the, the urgency is, is so needful that, that Jesus said right off the bat, enter the straight gate. See that? Why? Now, now He's going to let us know. And, and <coughs> church, we need to understand this, that, that the, the reason why Jesus said enter ye in at the straight gate, because there is another gate. But he's telling you, don't even look in that direction. Don't even, don't even, don't even, don't even. Uh, uh, what's the word? I'm. Uh, 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 don't even tamper with it. I mean, don't even, don't even give it a thought. Tinker is what I'm saying. Tinker with it. 
Don't don't be entertained with it. Yeah. Too, too many times we, as Brother David said this morning, we get, and it's not that we don't even mean to. I believe as a whole this morning we all say in the church that are, that we love the Lord by by everybody that I know here and, and by talking to you personally and, and, and in the church setting that, that everybody would say we love the Lord and we want to serve Him. We want to know more about Jesus. We want to live for Him more. We want to, we want to draw closer to Him. We want to be the best Christians that we can be and the best examples that we can be. But so often we're so easily, we're so easily withdrawn from that. And it's not that, well, God, I don't want to make time for you today. There's just other things for us to do. But, but we're living in a culture in a world that, that is just easy. You see? I want you to listen. I, it's just easy. And, and I use that word purposefully. Because we're not sitting here saying, well, today I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, you know, not, not do the Lord thing so much. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do a little bit more of this today than I am. I, I don't think that's our intent. But because it's so easy. Yeah. Even as Christians, even as, as people that love God, even as the people of God, it, it's so easy. So, so Jesus, He wants to be at the forefront of our attention. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Don't, don't, don't even think about nothing else. Don't even, don't even entertain no other ideas. Don't even entertain no other thoughts. He said, I want you to, to, to look straight ahead. There's a straight gate. Just go through it. Yeah. Why? Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. Straight. Now that word straight in the Greek, it, 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 it translates a narrow passage. You know, like a... a uh, a straight in the ocean. Now, visually, a straight can be a pretty big uh, opening, but when you consider that the straight between two two open oceans and bodies of water, that straight is just a narrow passage between the two. And and so he said, entering into the straight gate, the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. <coughs> Wide. Now, a lot of times when we're out somewhere, we're uh, we're always looking for, you know, the easiest access. If 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 you've got a um, if you've got a if you carry got something big or 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 you're you're um, say you're out somewhere with your kids and your kids are are, are um, uh, toddlers and you got them in a double stroller and. And you're going through, you know, you got to go through a, a door or a gate. A lot of times you'll go, you'll see a, a gate here that individuals go through, like Bass Pro Shop. They got those little turn things, you know, you got to go through, and people hate them, and, you know, they get confused about them. And uh, I've even seen people try to go in them from the back, and, you know, don't turn from the back, and just kind of fall over them. And, uh, but it, it kind of could, and, and, and it, it just seems like complicated, you know. Well, I gotta go through that little space and I gotta grab that hand and I gotta push it down and just walk right through that. That's just so complicated. And then over here, you know, if you choose not to go through that, you got the gate that just you all do is open the gate and my and you just open and you just walk right through. Or somebody with the stroller, they'll go through that versus that that other way, which they can't get through. And so so it's the easy way. Wide is the gate. Jesus said, go through the narrow way, the narrow gate. I, I know it looks tough. I know it looks, it's not easy. I, I know it, 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 it's, you, you, there's a line there, but, but, but that's the right way, the straight way. Choices. Often we're, we're persuaded to make the easy choices. Often we walk by sight and not by faith. Huh? Because sight tells us this is the best way, the easiest way. 
And faith tells us, look, that I, I know that seems the easiest way, but, uh, but, but, but trust me. Yeah. Just depend on me. I, I know it don't seem easy, and I know it, everybody else is telling you to do this, but, just, but, but faith says, look, I, I'm going to go the straight way. I'm not going to take the easy way out. I'm going to trust God in this matter. For wide is the gate and broad. Broad is the way. Now, I want, us to, I want us to look at this, all of us, young to, to adults, whatever. I, picture in your own mind. Draw your own picture here. You know, here lies, here lies a way that's, that's, that's straight and narrow. And, and, and over here is another gate, and it's, 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 it's wide, and, uh, and, and it's, it's broad. I mean, it's, there's easy access. And you're, you're going this direction, and all of a sudden, there, there's, there's these two gates, and the only way to, get, to keep going uh, to that direction is to go through one of the gates, but you're not sure where the gate leads. Now well, think about it. They both are beautiful gates. And they both serve the same purpose. But one gate is, is straight, one, one, one gate is narrow, and, and, and the other gate is, is wide, and, and it represents simplicity, and it represents, uh, you know, well, more people can go that way, and, and, and this narrow way over here, there's not a whole lot of people going that way. And you're going along and you come up to this gate and you see this line over here and it's a narrow and it's way. And, and you know, people are they're getting up to this gate, the narrow gate, and, and, and you notice that there's a bigger crowd over here and, and you know you're going to have to decide where you're going to go. And you look over here and think, well, I've heard that that's the best way and that's the right way. And, but you see people get, but, but hey, that, there's only one person going through at a time and man, you know, I don't want to have to wait and it's like being at Walmart and and you know and and but but then then and then some people's having to you know they have to do like this to get through that gate and you know hey but over here look at all these people they just they're just going through there no line no way to, people just walking free and no backup no, and they're just going through there now what am I going to do Jesus said enter in at the straight gate for, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in there at. Jesus said, whatever you do. Hey, it's a straight gate, church. <laughs> huh? It's straight. It's narrow. It's unpopular. The world don't like it. Uh, the, the churches, most churches, won't accept it. And, and and but 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 Jesus said it's the right way. And then he recants. He said, "Wait, wait a minute. Not only is it the right way, it's the only way. It's the only way." And he said, because broad. And I, I, this church has heard this before, but if, if, if it weren't true, I, I wouldn't say it. And, and God showed me this one day. And I want us to understand it because I see the church. Let me tell you real quick, because I'm going to stop. I didn't mean to go this far. I've got, a, I've got a whole... I mean, I've got 40 minutes worth here. The two ways. And, and sadly, I want you to listen. I, no, I want you to hear. I don't, want to, I don't want to lose what I said last week. I want you to hear. Sadly, the broadest way today is the church. The church. Because people are being misled. Huh? They're being misled. I, I, I'll never forget it. It was several years ago. And and I, I I God had just give me a vision. And, and and when I say a vision, I'm not talking about that I'm a prophet or special. When I say a vision, I'm saying the thought. God placed this thought to me and I've seen it vividly. Almost like a dream. And I, I told to the church it was years ago. But we was we was um at a at a mall and they was, I, I remember an escalator. An escalator always 
when I study texts, I always think about escalators. And and I was and it was it was kind of dark. You couldn't see the mall as far as detail, but but all I remember is I was I was trying to run up an escalator that was coming down. And man, I was struggling. And I was fighting. And it just didn't seem like I was going to make it. And I was getting tired and I was getting out of breath. And I just kept on and I kept on. And, and you know, if you ever tried that, and I've done it. And, you know, you, know, you get, uh, uh, if nobody's on it, it's not too bad. You can eventually get up it. But, but sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll be running and you'll, you'll coming down. And you've got to run harder, harder, harder. Because you've got to run faster up than the escalators are going down to make it to the top. And I see myself doing that, but the escalator was packed full of people. And they was coming down. And there was there was up at, up at the top, they were waiting in line. And they just kept on to come and coming by droves. And 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 I couldn't see, I, I never seen what was behind me because when I seen it, I was only going up the escalator. And and I remember going up and people was grabbing me and they was hollering at me and said, You're going the wrong way and, and what are you doing? And I was just I was determined to get to the top and people was laughing at me and they said, Turn around, you're going the wrong way, and you 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 need to come this way, we're going down, everybody's going down, you're going the wrong way. And I just kept going, I kept getting closer and closer, and it just it didn't seem like I was gonna make it. And, and people was laughing at me again. They'd, they'd, they'd holler at me and say, look, you're going the wrong way. And they were screaming. And, and almost they was getting upset with me because I was going up and they were trying to come down. And I was having to squeeze through the people. And, and, and finally, to make, not to take the whole thing, but to make it the whole little bit short and get the lesson, I, we closed. It's finally I got to the top. And when I got to the top, I was so exhausted. And I was giving out, and it just felt like that was it. And, and when I got to the top, I just seen everything clear. And it was like I was, I was, it was just, I didn't see, I didn't see streets of gold. I didn't see the pearly gates, but, but it was just so refreshing. And I really didn't see nothing. The people, the people had dissipated. Everything was behind me at this point when I got to the top and I stayed there. And it was just, it was just so refreshing. It was like, it was, it was victory. And then, then I turned around and I looked down and I kept seeing these people behind me. I didn't see it in front of me. But when I turned around, the people were still going down the escalator. And when I, when I took a step forward and looked down there, and I seen them, and they were falling off. And, and it was just like a black, uh, just a black big hole. And that was it. That was it. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that God gave that to me as, as, as a, but whatever it was. It just made, God just opened my eyes. And I'm thinking, man, thank God. And, and I was going, I was headed toward the straight, well, the straight gate. People was trying to, and people was going to try to turn you around in this world, church. They're going to try to convince you that it's not right. That, hey, that old preacher down there, he's preaching old stuff. And, and y'all singing old stuff. And y'all believing old stuff. And, and they're going to try to tell you young people, look, that's, old, that's old-fashioned. And, and, and that's not. And this is the way everybody's going today. And religion is like this now. And it's just everybody be happy and believe and be prosperous. And, and just go to the, the, the way of religion. Religion ain't going to get you. Jesus didn't say, enter ye in at the religious gate. He didn't say religion. The good works gate, the, the, the tithing gate, but entering at the straight gate. Amen. The straight gate. Because broad is the way. Broad implies that it's easy. Everybody's a going this way. Everybody's a doing it. It's the way of the crowd. It's the way of the world. It's, it's the way of, of ideology. It's the way of religion. The Broadway says, I, I, I'm, I'm doing it. I, I, when the road is called up yonder, I'm going to be there because I'm good. Because I'm religious. Because I'm a tither. Because I'm a good father. Because I've done this. I've done that. And the narrow way tells us we're allowed in because we're nothing. That's right. But Jesus is the way. We trusted in Him. We're not getting there by our works, by our religion, by our means, by our, our merit, 
But we're going because of what Jesus did to us. And we trust in Him. And He's Lord and Savior of our lives. In John Bunyan's book, The Pilgrim's Progress, I love so much and I encourage it. Of course, you about can't find it no more, but it was it was a story of a young man that was striving to make heaven his home. And and, and it was a struggle and, and he's, he had to forsake his family, he had to forsake his friends, and, and when he heard the preacher preaching, he, he was convicted and he had to get to the the, the, the yonder gate to get to the cross to get his burden lifted. The preacher said, if you just come get over there and, and you cross through that gate and you get to that that uh, that cross, and he said, there you'll find that you'll be relieved of your burden. It's just the whole allegory of, of the Word of God. And as he strived, his family told him he was crazy and, and people made fun of him and he ran into obstinance and, and worldly wise men. Oh, worldly wise men has got the church by the yes, tail today. You're right. Oh, worldly wise men convinces them. And, and it, it, but anyways, I remember as he descended and once he, he, he got that, the, the slaw of his spawn, once he got that burden relieved, he, he set out for heaven. And buddy, the battle was on. And I remember one of the quotes that he said in there, The hill though high, I covet to ascend. The difficulty will not be a feeling, for I perceive the way of life lies here. Come, pluck up heart, let's neither faint nor fear. Better though difficult, the right way to go. Than wrong though easy, where the end is woe. That's right. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Few there be that find it. Now that don't mean that they won't see the way. What it really means is as few there be that take it. They'll see it, but they'll refuse it. Because they'll choose the easy way, the wide gate, the broad way, because it's the way that the world's going. Bible, God had told um, the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy, I set before you this day good and life, evil and death, prosperity. He said, choose this day. Church, have you chosen life this morning? The, the easy way, it seems right. The way of influence, it seems popular. The way of the world and religion, it, it seems easy. Everybody else is going that way, preacher. They've got to be right. Yeah, go ahead, They've preacher. got to be right. But Jesus said, enter ye in at the straight gate. Amen. Because narrow is the way and straight is the gate that leads to life. And he says, few people will choose it. Well, which way have you chosen today? We're all going to face choices in life. But remember, one day those choices will be made. What choices have you made for eternity? Have you chose the ways of this world, the way of religion? Have you chose to do, try to do it yourself? Or you chose the way that Jesus has laid before us? The narrow way. It's not going to be the easy way. It's not going to be the popular way. There's going to be hills and there's going to be valleys. There's going to be good times and bad times. There's going to be sad times. But let me tell you, as, as I got to talk, it just yeah. about seemed like I, I wasn't going to make it. But let me tell you something. One thing I remember, I never gave up. Amen. I was determined to make it to the top. And along that journey up that escalator, there was times that I fell down. There was times that I started going backwards, but I never looked that way. But I just kept on going. And I tell you, when I made it to the top, there was a relief come over me that I've never experienced before. Church, the right way, the straight gate, the narrow gate is the way to go. Even though they be few to find it. Listen, when we make it across that line, we won't be sorry that we went that way. Right. Everybody stand to your feet. <laughs>
as our musicians come and our song leader, we have a moment of invitation. I was going to preach to you this morning on the twos in the Bible. But I think God had done His work already. There are two ways in life, church, that we can go. But Jesus tells us to choose the right way. The straight way. The narrow way. Because it's the only way that leads to life. Have you done that this morning? Would you come? God is dealing with your heart. Would you come? Accept the way to life. Which way have you chose today? Have you decided? Have you made that decision today? Every hand bowed and every eye closed as the music plays softly. We're going to close right now, I promise. But only God knows your heart this morning, and you know your heart. Which way have you chosen this morning? Church, I'm telling you, as a Christian, as a pastor, not by my choosing, but by what God has called me to do, I know how easy it is to get persuaded. We need to focus on the right way, the straight gate, the narrow way. Because it's the only way that leads to life. And Jesus cared about us so much, He told us right off the bat, enter ye in at the straight gate. Don't, don't choose no other way. Don't drift. Don't stray. Don't turn to the left or the right. But go through the straight gate. Because it's the one that leads to life. He's prepared the way for us. But He's in front of us leading that way. And He'll never lead us wrong. He loves you with unmerited favor this morning. And He wants you to live. Not only in this life, but in the life to come. Have you made that decision for Him? My prayer is that you have. Choose life today. Don't be persuaded to go the way that looks easy. The way that seems right. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right in the man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Choose you this day to serve the Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you for another privilege to be in your house. Thank you, Lord, for the service. Thank you for the movement and the operations of the Holy Spirit. Father, it's not me this morning, but God, I delivered my heart the way you led me this morning. And God, it's so important that we understand what Jesus is telling us. That we enter in at the straight gate because wide is the gate and broad way to the destruction. And many people are going through it, God. Lord, we should have a burden for those folks this morning. Because God, they're just going into it blind, unexpected. Lord, thinking it's the, the easy way. It's the way that, that it's the easiest path to success. The easiest path to, to popularity. It's the easiest path to, to, to friends. And it's the easiest path to, to fortune in a lot of times. It's the easiest path in a lot of ways. But God, they don't see what's on the other side of that game. On the other side of that gate is destruction and death. And you said many are choosing that way. God, let us see it for what it really is. I pray this morning that we've all chosen Jesus. We've all chosen life. The door, the narrow, the straight way. That we're following Him as He leads the way. He don't just give it to us and tell us to figure it out. Jesus is leading the way. And He's opening that gate. For all that have come through it. And it's given us eternal life. God, let our choice be made today. Let us choose Christ and life and eternity with Him. 
before it's eternally too late. Amen. Now, God, we pray for those families out in Texas. We pray for those families out in Dayton, Ohio, God. Lord, the darkness that's upon this world today, God, Lord, it's going to see. God, let us see that it's guns in the problem. Let us see that legislation isn't the answer. Let us see that, God, that it's not about politics. But, God, let us see the problem is with the hearts of man. And, God, unless you change hearts of men, God, there's always going to be these problems. God, we pray that you just comfort those victims this morning. I do. God, that you send revival in our hearts. Let it begin with us, God. Search us and try us, Father. Let us be concerned for these young people that's, that the devil is just taking at will and, and filled with hatred and with evil, God. And they're carrying these deeds out. But God, it all stems from the heart. So God, protect our young people here this morning. Yes. Every family represented here right now that's got children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nephews and nieces, God, I pray that you put a protection around yes. them, put a wall around them, God. Lord, just let them, uh, just protect them and give them safety. And God, let us lead them in the way that you'd have them to go, God. Don't let it depart from them. Let them make choices that, Lord, that would be worthy. God, even though the world might look on them narrowly and, and talk about them, maybe God, let them stand and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Let them be a tower for you, God. Yes, amen. And lift them up and let them lead others to that light that's in Jesus Christ. And we thank you and praise for it all. Go with us now. Lord, we pray for cricket. God, just God. feel her, God. My heart is so heavy for her. I don't know her condition, God. I don't know the special her spiritual condition is my, my heaviest burden, God. Lord, I pray that you save her soul if she's not saved, God. Lord, that she had that opportunity to cry out to Jesus before it was eternally too late. Lord, such a young, beautiful girl, God. And Lord, what caused it? Sin. That's in the heart of man. That's right. So God, I pray that you just be with them and their family today. Touch her in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. Bless the prayer service tonight as we come and pray. Let it change lives. Let it change us. And we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Shake somebody's hand. Let them know you love them and appreciate them.